right back. This is Dr. Crystal Porter, your host for How the Hair Are You? And we are here with Miss Alicia Nesperic. She is our in-studio guest and student here at Chicago State University who has natural hair. And so she was telling us um, a little bit about her hair experiences and I really, really appreciate it. And before we continue on with you, I want to talk about something that I've been getting a lot of questions on and that is the WIN products. So WIN is a company and there are lots of infomercials on here and I remember when it first came out, a lot of women were asking me about, oh, what do you think of WIN? And I was like, well, it's co-washing. So if you're into co-washing, then it's fine, you know. And so I don't think that a lot of the infomercials or the way that they promoted the product really gave in-depth information about really how it worked. And I think over time, people figured out that it's a co-wash. But, um, and for those of you who don't know what co-washing is, that's basically using a conditioner to wash your hair with. And so it does not necessarily cleanse the hair because you are basically treating your hair with a rinse out conditioner. And so there isn't a lot of, I mean, you're rinsing away some stuff, but you're really, in my opinion, no, the, the truth is you're, after you repeat the applications of the co-wash, you're building up product. And so what happens when you build up product is you um, have a tendency to weigh your hair down, which is what people with curly hair like. But one of the things that they don't tell you is if you put heat on after you have this product build up, then that's not good for the hair. So when people ask me about co-washing, I tell them if you don't put heat on your hair, then it's a problem. But if you put heat on your hair, it's a problem. But if you don't put heat on your hair, just know that at least every five times, you have to clarify your hair with a real shampoo. So that is my opinion about when products, but I want to talk about the lawsuit because they're talking about hair loss. And the first thing I thought about was, you know, let's have a look at the ingredients to make sure that there isn't anything in there that would be detrimental to the scalp or the health of the scalp. So it has water, organic, aloe vera, leaf juice, pomegranate extract. I mean, so it's a lot of stuff that really just sounds good and makes makes people want to buy it because it makes them think all natural, but it really isn't doing anything. Now the, well, the extracts aren't doing anything. However, if you look at the other ingredients like the dimethylamine or the acetyl alcohol, and keep in mind, even though I say alcohol, it's not the drying rubbing alcohol that you're used to when you go into your bathroom closet <clears throat> and you you know, have this drying alcohol. It's actually something that's a solid and it's a wax and it really helps to form the formulation. So that isn't the type of alcohol we're talking about, but it has almond oil in it. And there are just things in it that is very conditioning. And so it adds to the slip of the hair. And there is not anything, if you rinse it out, that would really cause a problem. So in terms of whether or not the formula itself would be a problem to the hair. For most people, it would not. And when I, when I say for most people, I want to clarify that sometimes there are people who are just sensitive to certain ingredients. And for those who are sensitive to certain ingredients, if you haven't been tested, then sometimes you have to find out by process of you know, kind of elimination what is actually causing some irritation that you may have. But it's, in terms of hair loss, and looking at these ingredients, there is absolutely nothing that would cause hair loss. So uh, I'm thinking personally that if you use the product and you do what they do in the promos, which is to groom the hair and use a blow dryer and style it like you normally would, you're going to have some problems because over time, because of the buildup, that is not going to be good for the hair, not with that So. And saying that I don't see anything that is a problem. So, why would people be using their hair if they are using this product? But here's the thing there are people losing their hair and they're not using wind products. <laughs> so, there can be some manipulation that you're doing or some internal problems that you're having 
that may lead to hair loss anyway. So my thought is, it's very hard to, well, keep settling um, the lawsuit with these 200 women. Um, and the guy who actually is behind when his name is Chas Dean, he is a uh, um, Hollywood stylist. And he's settling because it's gonna be hard for him to disprove that his products aren't causing the problem and then behind the scenes they were taking down all of the comments that were negative. So they kind of look suspicious and that's unfortunate. But um, you can't say that because it's um, a problem that the correlation that these women are having a problem is causation because of the use of wind products. Because I can also have women who use another type of product and a percentage of them are going to be experiencing hair loss and then they're going to say, oh, is this product? No, not necessarily. I mean, you may have had that problem anyway. But, so we talked about maybe someone is sensitive to it. We talked about the fact that they may have groomed themselves, but there are some people who could have just jumped on the bandwagon as well. And there was a, um, another show, actually a podcast, that um, this team of scientists, cosmetic scientists called um, Beauty Brains, mm -hmm. they actually talked about this as well. And one of the things they did bring up, like I said, is the grooming with the buildup that occurs over time. So they had basically the same assessment that, that I did, that there's nothing wrong with the products or the ingredients in the product, but if you use it and you do not use it in a way that's going to just elongate the curl. If you put heat on it, it's going to be a problem and you will have hair breakage over time. So that is my take on that. <laughs> have you ever used the wind products? I haven't, but I've seen the infomercials and yes, you can't help but you can't help but to like, oh, I want to, I want, you want to try it because it looks like it's believable. Mm -hmm. The advertising is. Oh, no, they're, exactly. <laughs> they're very effective. Mm -hmm. Very effective. But I'm not gonna say that there is any proof out there, and he just wants it to go away, and he's making like so much money, so I'm sure that he can do that, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've just never been a fan of co-washing, so mm -hmm. I tried you it. tried it. I then. tried it. And once? Not once, but I tried it oh, okay. and, and over time. <laughs> okay. I just realized your hair just ends up with a lot of product on it. It just doesn't, yeah. I'd rather shampoo. I understand the concept behind it, especially when you build it up and then your curl elongates and but there's other problems because when you're manipulating it either with your fingers or with your comb, then you're increasing what we call drag. Mm -hmm. And so it takes more force to put your fingers through it. You're, hopefully you're not using too many brushes, but your brush, your comb. Mm -hmm. And so you have to get that off your hair all the time. And it's not clean. You want to clean your hair. But I have not used it either because I learned earlier on exactly what it was and I wasn't interested in doing it because I had a relaxer. And that's the other thing. Um, there were people who wear a re have their hair relaxed and they were using the wind products and then at first it feels good, but then over time they were having problems. I'm like, yes, that's because you're not cleaning the hair. <laughs> so even though they say it's for all hair types, they really need to preface it to say that there's some things that aren't ideal when you use it. So mm -hmm. I'm not totally against co-washing if you clean your hair periodically. So that's what I have to say about that. <laughs> but I did want to follow up with you, Alicia, because with your experiences, um, and I know transitioning um, can be hard for a lot of people, and you talked about that, but have you had any other experiences like this? playing around with different products or treatments. Oh, yeah. I was a product junkie. <laughs> okay. I have tried a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. Um, now I'm just down to a simple regimen. I use um, Cure Care uh, shampoo conditioner. And I love Cure Care. Yeah. Um, that's actually the professional line of Avalon. Mm -hmm. 
and um, Ali Syed, that's his company, and he is a brilliant scientist. I have to tell people Ali Syed is the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good guy, um, and he has great products, mm -hmm. so you're using a very good product. Yeah, so that, and then the lead man is Kiki Curly, not today, and then I just find whatever oil I have. Whatever yes. oil. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Have you heard about that 30 day hair detox that they were talking about? Have you heard about that? No. no. I think it starts uh, February 20 something. I, I don't remember the date, but yeah, th there's this detox and they're trying to get people to tame or actually not use the oils so much. Yeah. And there are some added benefits mm -hmm. for not using oils every day because it really does not come out of the hair after a while. Okay. I mean, it, it absorbs and then it continues to absorb. And then you have prob problems because you won't be able to manipulate it the way you want, but it really depends on how you wear your hair. Mm -hmm. And so if you ever go to change it and wear it straight, you'll definitely feel the effects oh, of yeah. the oils being put on your hair every day. And they're like, no, your hair doesn't need oil. And I agree with that. I, I agree wholeheartedly with that. So a 30-day detox is not a bad thing. You can look that up. Okay. <laughs> no, that we talked about that last show. Yeah. <laughs> that is true, though. When you straighten out your hair, you it kind of reveals everything you've been doing to your hair over time. Mm -hmm. So this allows me to escape the reality of my hair. <laughs> <laughs> and then when it's straight, it's just like, oh, yeah, it just isn't as healthy as I thought it was. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's definitely true. So you think you're taking care of your hair, but you're really not. Your hair is really damaged, but... It's just in this pro, and you're ignoring all the signs. That is so true. <laughs> well, so you use your oils, but mm -hmm. is it every day or no? You, okay, maybe um, once or twice a week. So after I wash it, and then again, if it's really dry. Now you said you find an oil. So what are you, what's your oil of okay. choice? Okay, <laughs> uh, I have jojoba oil, okay. um, avocado. But that's before I wash, which you, yeah, sometimes. They but I stopped doing that. Read, yeah, read <laughs> that 30-day hair detox. <laughs> I stopped doing castor oil before I wash because Dr. Porter said it was bad. So. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. I mean, so the deal with castor oil is it, make, it increases drag when you manipulate it, and you should be able to feel that, too. You should be able to feel, you know, what we call this the viscous nature of castor oil, meaning that it's thicker. So it's more of the consistency of um, like a, a, a syrup mm -hmm. as opposed to water. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that drag just is not good. And you're actually just counteracting what you want to do, which is clean it because everything gets stuck to castor oil. And so you don't want to do that. So castor, I, I really don't see a time where castor oil would just be, oh yes, that's the best thing for you to use. Because the drag and just how, like I said, everything sticks to it. It's not bad for your hair, just as it interacts with it. It's just the consistency of it does not allow you to go through your hair in an effective way because you want to increase lubricity, make it, you know, that slip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and castor oil is counteractive to that. Yeah. So. Thank you for listening. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> and how has it been? Have you found that your hair is in worse condition because you stopped that? I mean, well, now I'm experimenting with how much product I use. So I've been realizing maybe I've been using too much product. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that's what I've been doing, just trying to cut back on how much product. Can I get the same results with less product? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's well, it, it depends on the product. It depends on the product. Yeah, it on the product. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Let let the aesthetics actually guide you. Mm -hmm. How your hair is feeling. You, your hair will tell you at the different stages of you going through your routine. Mm -hmm. it, it, it'll let you know whether or not oh this is enough slip with this amount. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't need to add more. Mm -hmm. yeah. Save your money for sure. Absolutely. So. Um, if you had to give some advice to other people, like I'm growing my hair out, and I would have to say that my hair texture is probably, or the curl pattern is probably about the same as yours. So any words of wisdom you have for me as I go through this again? Yeah. <laughs> my words of wisdom would be to 
to take the low maintenance route to try to do that would be somebody else doing my hair and I'm too cheap for that <laughs> I shouldn't say that no, yeah but, just like you know manipulating it maybe once a week and just letting it just grow because I know a lot of people try to do something to it every day like they retwist and they literally are manipulating their hair and their hands are in their hair every single day mm -hmm. and so I've learned that when I keep my hands out of my hair I get better results mm -hmm. so if I'm just touching it once a week detangling it and you know every day I try to touch it like when I shake it back out try to look for shed hairs so yeah other than that I would just take a low maintenance route of manipulate it once a week Find product, a product line that works for your hair. I have found that. <laughs> I, I, I have a product line that I'm working with, but it's, you know, it's interesting because even though scientifically I got that covered, it's the aesthetic yeah. part <laughs> that I don't have. And I know it's just going to take some time, but I, I see myself, you know, I see women wearing their hair in, like, in big twists. I see me doing that. I see me rocking twists like the what I'll call the, the plaited twist. Yep. Oh, absolutely. I will definitely do that because it's easy. I can do it myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think I can get my hair to look reasonably decent yeah. doing it that way. So I think that's the route that I'm going to go. But time will tell. Like yeah. I said, I'm taking it one day at a time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was definitely my trick. Just taking something, sticking with it for a week and next week do something else I'll keep you posted well you'll see me yeah wait you'll see the condition of my hair so <laughs> all right well we are at, at the end of the show so this went really fast yeah. I, I know you were a little nervous coming on but I really thank you for coming thank on you for I, I think the you. listeners really could get some new knowledge from your experiences and, and that's really what this show is about making sure that everyone is aware of people's experiences and concerns and um, that's what we're here addressing so until next week we'll be back at 10 a.m on tuesday so um, in the words of my ex-co-host miss yadakar want everyone out there to take care and love your hair and we'll see you next week bye bye <laughs>